Electric cars are no longer a thing of the future. They are here. Tesla, of course, is the first one that comes to mind when you talk about electric mobility with OEMs like Mercedes-Benz with its EQ range, BMW with its iCars and the VW Group with the ID range are catching up fast. And here in India, we have the likes of Mahindra Electric and Tata Motors, both doing their bit to go green. But none of those OEMs will be able to do half of what they do without the support of component manufacturers like Bosch. Which is why we are at their top secret test facility in Bengaluru to drive something rather interesting. This is a white Maruti Suzuki Baleno, which is a very popular color, of course, for this premium hatchback and it's the color a lot of people buy. Now, it looks standard on the outside, but it's got some stickers on it and it says Bosch right here. So, considering the fact that these guys do make a lot of tech for a lot of cars, this does seem to be something special and honestly, it just is. It isn't a petrol, it isn't a diesel, it's not a CNG of course. This thing is all electric. Now a lot of talk has happened about electric cars and the fact that they are coming and how the government should help electric cars get popular. But nobody talks about converting a standard petrol, box standard petrol or diesel car to electric. And that's exactly what they've done. And we're gonna spend a day with it, drive it, and tell you what the challenges are of course, and tell you how nice these can actually get. What the engineers at Bosch have done is pretty simple. They've taken the original 1.2 litre K12 engine, which is quite nice in its own right, and basically thrown it away. And the same with the 5-speed gearbox. Instead, what has been installed in the empty engine bay is what Bosch calls an E-axle setup, basically a combination of the electric machine or the motor itself, the electronics that control everything, and an actual gearbox that transfers power from the motor to the drive shaft all-in-one compact packaging. So the big question, how does it actually feel behind the wheel, especially since this car weighs well over 100 kilos more than the standard version? Now it's quite uncanny how the Baleno with an electric powertrain drives because used to it making uh, a little bit of noise whether it be a petrol or diesel but this one is uh, actually more powerful than the petrol version and this car originally was a petrol uh, under the bonnet is an electric motor with a set of drive shafts it's not a hub motor it's a standard electric motor it makes about 115 brake horsepower and makes about 200 newton meters of torque uh, at the back are the lithium-ion batteries mounted in the boot it's a 10 kilowatt hour battery pack, which isn't ideal for a car this size. It ideally should be about 25 to 30 kilowatt hour if you do want a range of about 300 or 350 kilometers. But this is of course a demonstration vehicle. It's a it's a concept. It's a it's a prototype. So that does the job really well. Of course, it does add a little bit of weight, but even with all that weight, this car does zero to hundred in just eight seconds. And although that's just been dyno tested by Bosch. Trust me, when you put, do put your foot flat down, it does seem to get a move along really well. Much nicer actually than as compared to the standard Baleno and even the Baleno RS. For starters, a whole bunch of auxiliary systems that we take for granted have to be reworked. For example, the power steering pump works off the engine and because there isn't one anymore, an auxiliary pump that runs off the electric motor has been fitted and the same for the brakes too. This particular Baleno also does not have air conditioning, but the engineers assured us that given enough time, that would be easy enough to add in. Fitting in was not that difficult. Throwing an engine and fitting mechanical fitments were not that difficult. What was interesting was how to calibrate that car and do parameterization. That every system is working in a safe way, in the desired way and so on. And also honors the safety uh, systems of the car. Uh, 
So it is not a very difficult task, it is doable. And the changes aren't just under the hood. The all-electric hatchback is now an automatic and has just a simple selector with park, drive and reverse, all that you really need. Bosch has also ripped out the touchscreen infotainment system that comes on the standard top spec Baleno and replaced it with a high-tech touchscreen of its own. And while it might not have the latest connectivity like Apple CarPlay, what it does get is inbuilt diagnostics, driver pattern analysis and a whole bunch more tech for the geek inside of you. Uh, definitely. The benefit is that we have the complete knowledge of what's happening in the car and bringing a lot of data from that into the head unit itself. It's not about just showing a navigation or about connectivity. So it's about using the information in the car coming from, for example, engine management or whether how the braking or when you have electrification or hybrid on how this information can be used effectively for working of a car itself. And just like what you get on the Ford EcoSpot, it also has an inbuilt system that can alert the nearest police station and hospital in case of a crash. All in all, something like this, while it won't be reality anytime soon, is certainly exciting to see, touch and most importantly, drive since electric cars can actually be fun to drive, especially when you put that foot down hard. Bosch has not only made this car as a showcase of what they are capable of, but also as a point to ponder on. Would we all doing electric car conversions in the future, buying kits off the internet and installing these over a weekend ourselves? Cost will be a big consideration of course, but it is something to think about.